Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials Video 21. It's on the magnetic dipole moment, which is the torque that material experiences when you put it in a magnetic field. And so if you add an object to a magnetic field and it's not affected, then it doesn't have this magnetic dipole moment. And so let's say we take a bar magnet like this. Is it magnetized? Well, a quick way to figure that out is to use a compass. And so a compass is essentially a small floating magnet on a needle. And so if we put this next to the bar magnet, you can see that the south side of the compass is facing the north side of the magnet and vice versa down here on the other side of the magnet. So we would say it's definitely magnetized. And it's the magnetic dipole moment inside the bar magnet that's causing it to be magnetized. But let's say I want to break this magnet and I just crack it in half. Have I destroyed the magnet? Well, we'd test it in the same way. We'd use compasses again at either side, and you can see that they line up. In this case, the north side of this magnet is facing the south side of the smaller magnet. And so now we've essentially created two dipoles. And if you break it in half again, we have two smaller magnets, and you can keep breaking it and breaking it and breaking it. And what you'll find is you'll just make smaller and smaller and smaller magnets. And so there's something intrinsic in the magnet itself that's causing it to be magnetized, and that's the magnetic dipole moment. And so matter that shows a magnetic behavior has this property called the magnetic dipole moment. And so it could be at the level of domains, which can, they're really small parts of a magnet. They can be up to about the size of a millimeter. But if we break down those, they're built up of atoms, and atoms themselves are made up of electrons. And the spin of those electrons gives them a magnetic dipole moment as well. And so all of these levels of dipoles is creating the overall effect of a magnet. And so what is magnetism? Well, in a permanent magnet or an induced magnet, what we're doing is lining up those dipoles, and now the whole object has a dipole as well, a north and a south. And so to understand what a dipole is, it simply means two charges. And so if we were to look at an electric dipole, right here we have a positive charge and a negative charge, and then we have electric fields that form around the outside of it. So this is an electric dipole. Watch how this diagram changes as I move it to a magnetized dipole, and you'll see that it really didn't change at all. Now we've got a north and a south, and instead of having an electric field, we have a magnetic field. And so what is a, a magnetic dipole? It's simply a dipole, two charges, but those are magnetized. And so if we were to look at a bar magnet like this, it has a north and a south side. But what really is creating it are these domains inside the magnet itself. And so iron, for example, that's not magnetized, what we would find is inside those domains, the dipoles are there, but they're facing in every other direction. And so if I were to change this and make it a permanent magnet, watch what happens to those domains is they all essentially line up. And so it's the domains that must be causing the magnetism. Well, it's not. It could be the atoms as well. So if we look at the atoms themselves, those are made up of charges, and so those can have dipoles. And even if we get to the level of electrons, electrons, because of their spin, are magnetized as well. And so at all levels through in the magnet, we can see these dipoles, and those are contributing to the overall behavior of the magnet itself. And so what is a permanent magnet? It's essentially a material that can permanently create these magnetic fields. And so if you ever add it to another magnetic field, it'll experience a torque or a moment based on those magnetic dipoles. And so does all material on our planet have the ability to be magnetized? No, it's based on the internal atomic and molecular structure. But if I were to take paper clips, for example, put them next to a permanent magnet, they could be an induced magnet. In other words, all those domains are st starting to line up, and then you would have a paper clip that is an induced magnet. And so it's only a few of the elements on the periodic table that can be lined up like this, being ferromagnetic. So it could be iron, copper, nickel. And then we have these rare earth metals, like a neodymium magnet that we have right here, and it has this ferrofluid over the surface of it. You can almost see those magnetic fields coming out of that magnet. And so did you learn that a magnet is created through these magnetic dipole moments that occur at all different levels inside the structure of the magnet? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.